I called it that because, well, I do not like the state of what Minecraft maps look like right now. And it's a huge problem, but uh, first let me introduce myself. I came into Minecraft in 2012. Uh, making YouTube videos like most people do, and then I moved on to making custom content. My first in 2013, Calamity, which some of you may recognize is played through Minecraft and Yawcast, you know, back in the day they were popular. Now, uh, from that, I moved on to work with the Voxabox to release the Genius Machine, Muckluck Lodge, and a few other projects, and uh, I actually quit my job to do that full time. Uh, right up until Mo Yang introduced their corporate guidelines. And uh, since then, uh, I have been working on a pod podcast called the Green Mug Podcast to promote uh, vanilla custom maps. I have experience doing this before with limited engagement. In the last two years, it was a 10-episode show. Uh, we interviewed a couple Mojang developers on the show. We promoted a lot of custom maps and talked about custom map creation Minecraft. Before Minecraft, I worked in the Half-Life 2 modding scene, and from the start of that to watching the heyday of that from when the first version of Stanley Parable dropped, when Dear Esther dropped, uh, Counter-Strike, Red Orchestra, when they, they made the jump from being a mod to a game made from Unreal to being a game. And before that, uh, Quake 2, where we saw the kind of beginnings of Gloom, which then I believe that some of those team members went to work on Natural Selection, which ended up being its own game. To say that I've been working in the modding scene for a long time would be probably since about 1999. So I'm here today to talk about why we need to stop playing Minecraft. And that is because Minecraft is slowly becoming a game development platform. And for this talk, I'm going to ask that I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of in this weird position right now where I'm the really I'm I'm, I'm a command blocker. I use vanilla command blocks. I pretty much essentially only work within vanilla Minecraft. I don't use mods, but you know I feel like I'm kind of surrounded by people. So ask that we just suspend our belief for a second between the differences between custom mods and maps and we just all call it i'm just going to blanket it all as custom content for minecraft so we have a lot of different uh for example we have uh, game mode 4 which is enhancing vanilla minecraft we have a lot of mods that are enhanced vanilla minecraft but the problem with it, and the problem that I'm seeing with custom maps in particular, I'm talking parkour maps, I'm talking here the CTM maps, there's a lot of maps where we're completely entrenched in Minecraft culture, this kind of weird culture that came out of bugs in the game, that came out of uh, what available at the time, and a lot of that would be the survival games, a lot of that is the Hunger Games before that, the uh, UHC that was popular at that time, and then also the rise of mini games. Uh, and I'm talking about Bad Line here, I'm talking high kind of ranking games, uh, a lot of mini game servers, and a lot of the custom maps that are coming out kind of shadows of what these what these initial products were. And it's it's a really sad and really kind of depressing scene right now. Because I find, and I found in a lot of the previous games that I've played, in from Half Life 2, from Quake 2, from uh, to Jedi Knight, Lucas Arts, a lot of the best ideas didn't come from the game culture itself, but rather someone bringing in an outside idea in and making something new. And I find that Minecraft into more of a game development platform we need to start stop thinking of minecraft as a game that we 
create things inside of, but rather as a tool more akin to Adobe Photoshop, more akin to Modeling Maker, the level designers. And once we start realizing that, hey, maybe staring at a blank page, staring at an open blank file or a bit of code for that isn't the best way to get more creative. So I'm asking people to please stop playing Minecraft and instead go read some books, go play other games. And when you see the other movies, music, other people and other culture and other things outside of Minecraft, you can start thinking critically, okay, how can I turn that into a game? How can I turn that into a mod? Games, you should be studying and be thinking, oh, why did they do this? Why did they make this decision at this time? There's a quote, <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a quote that I absolutely love from uh, William Faulkner. It says, uh, read, 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 read everything. The trash, classics, good and bad. See how they do it. Just like a carpenter who works as an apprentice and studies the master, read. You'll absorb it, then write. And if it's good, you'll find out. If Throw it out the window. And instead of just playing Minecraft, instead of staring at Minecraft and figuring out what to do, we should be playing other games and realizing what the, pro what the pros are doing, what they've done already, and study why they made these decisions. Like, you take someone like Jonathan Blow, his work with The Witness, the work with uh, Braid, or even Phil Fish. Despite all the drama, if you look at all the decisions he made when he was making Fez, these are genius decisions that come from really well-designed games. So, uh, at this point, I'm just going to pause. I've said a lot, and I've rambled a lot, and I'd like to take a few questions uh, before I get back to uh, what we should be thinking about and how this is going to develop, help develop Minecraft, promote Minecraft as a game development platform. Okay, so, like, like obviously you're saying that when we get into this map making or mod making or whatever mode, we shouldn't be thinking of Minecraft as a game. But would you also say it's like toxic or s some other word for that, for someone to just play survival Minecraft when they're also a content creator for Minecraft? No, and I think we should definitely make that distinction of when you're playing Minecraft and when you're using Minecraft as a development tool. Uh, one of the things I've done as I create stuff is I have tons of worlds and I have tons of resource packs where I've changed the models, I've changed the textures, I've built my own worlds using uh, MC Edit, using World Edit, using Whatever, and I've designed those worlds player, single player, all those kinds of things, I've put them together to, uh, the, it's a production environment and I have many different projects that uh, the world and the resource pack hooks together. Then I also have a fun profile where I play, play other maps, where I play survival Minecraft, distinct mindsets and ways that we need to set up development environment. Uh, we're the Minecraft panel. <laughs> uh, uh, answer your question? Yes, yes, I believe you did. That was very interesting. Thank you. So, uh, does anyone else have a question about why you should stop playing Minecraft and maybe why? Uh, Minecraft could start being viewed as more of a development tool. Uh, kind of silly one here. Um, 
seeing as I hardly ever play Minecraft and the only mod I've done really is OC MIPS, which basically adds an emulator, or adds a MIPS CPU emulator to open computers. Uh, am I doing it right? I believe you absolutely are. There's many rules that come with uh, game development, and I believe I need to kind of position my talk and position this uh, panel as I, I'm speaking to game developers specifically and not uh, people who are also making tools for games. So uh, for open computers, for things like that, these are tools that could help game developers make better games. You're making a mod, you, they could, that could also be considered maybe a library or be uh, something that could aid aid a game to be created. And mods themselves all can also be very fun. <laughs> I like to be very careful to say that I don't think mods are just tools to make games. I think mods can also be games in their right. And this is the this this will bring me into my next point. There is a strange culture we have uh, with Minecraft, and I find it so strange uh, in com when compared to how the Half-Life 2 modding scene then matured, and how the Quake modding scene, and how those kinds of engines uh, developed. And I mean, even StarCraft and WarCraft 3, and then Dota rising out of those, and League from Dota. Uh, those we, we consider mods to be either add-ons to the game but also largely games in themselves uh i don't think there's anyone who was playing half-life that flipped over to counter-strike and said you know what this is an extension of half-life this is this is just this is half-life but you know just a little different everyone felt like it was a different and then you take something like the Killing Floor, which yes had a lot of guns from uh, Unreal Tournament, uh, or Unreal Three, was it? But it was still, in its right, its own game. Dear Esther, Stanley Parable. There's so many games. Uh, Red Dead Redemption, even. Uh, uh, we we considered them their own games and their own separate product. But within Minecraft, this is a very strange thing that has happened, where mods mostly feel to be additions to Minecraft, where it's it's supposed to enhance the Minecraft experience, but it still relies on the two basic principles of mining crafting tools, or putting together spells, or pipelines, or gathering organization. They're so much primarily not a thank you unascribe. What I find is a lacking surprise, a total lack of conversions in Minecraft, this is what Unscratch Un Un said, and I absolutely agree. That's the weirdest part. It's a strange, strange culture, and you know, Minecraft is getting to this point where cross-platform is becoming a reality with uh, the addition of Windows 10 using kind of the same code base or based off the same code base as Pocket Edition, as the console editions, as all these other editions, they're slowly and eventually going to reach parity. And when we realize like, what that really means is a ton of more players. And for if and when the API ever came out, we're going to need developers who are also level designers, that are also game designers, that are not just people who are enhancing Minecraft itself, but also viewing Minecraft as its own platform, because if that's what it's moving to, giant, major, amazing platform. And we do have IP that is already well developed in it. If you look at uh, content creators like uh, Fe Disco with his mini games, Cake Defense Two, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, he has a very, very distinct, strong style. High Pixel has a, a medieval style. Uh, Voxabox had its own crazy, amazing style. Blocks Works has a very technical, very crazy looking, looking style. Uh, Nox Crew has a very futuristic type of thing. There's a lot of IP and a lot of maps that are created out there that 
could be developed using Minecraft as a release platform, and it's not that crazy to think about anymore. And if three years ago, I'd be like, no, that, that's never going to happen. This is still kind of a weird, crazy subculture, but it's getting there. Maps are getting more prevalent. Map pack Xbox now. Yes, they're by the developers uh, from the Microsoft side, but still, they're, it's happening. The idea is in the head that, hey, they're releasing map packs. Why can't I do that? They have this whole new aliens and stuff. Why can't I do that? So uh, I'll open up the floor uh, about this part. I have a lot of strong beliefs about what Minecraft is. All right. Go ahead, please. So how does this uh, mesh with, let's say, the with uh, something like uh, Reactor Idle, which is taken heavily from um, things like IC2 and BuildCraft? Uh, would you be able to uh, just further explain that mod a bit for me? So, uh, Reactor Idle is uh, its actually a Flash game. It's a dumb Flash game, but it's its taken mechanics from in Minecraft and, and produced a standalone game. We're moving towards it then. I, I hadn't heard of that. That sounds awesome. So it's a flash game that's within inside Minecraft, or is just taking the elements no, and translating them into the 3D space? No, it's it's taken elements that are that come straight out of the let's say the IC2 reactor GUI, and it's taken it completely outside of Minecraft and replicated it in Flash. Okay. So. We're where it's a game that's based on uh, configurations from IC2. Right. Okay. Uh, that sounds I, that's a, that sounds like a completely different conversation. I mean, it's a game that, that made uh, basically from a logic puzzles, essentially, right? What, whether like, what if IC2 didn't exist? Like, where where would this be translated from? Any kind of like draw the line puzzles or like fill the no, flip no, the no. pipes that kind of thing. It uh, it's not like that. Uh, I mean, it it pretty much couldn't exist without IC two. Oh, that's a, that's an interesting. Sorry, it's go ahead. Heat, it's a heat diffusion simulation, and I I kind of love those. Yeah, and one of the other things was it directly takes a lot of concepts that are uh, from Minecraft, like the slots, for example. I don't really see uh, systems precisely like Minecraft slot system that often. It's just it's a fixed grid of slots that you can configure freely, rather than a bag of slots or something similar. I mean, like Factorio was. Um, Factorio is is fits in the same class. It was inspired by Buildcraft. But the other very, thing very that lightly. But the other mm. thing that I wanted to just briefly call people's attention to um, are actually uh, Vasky's making a, a million tiny mods these days. Uh, Psy in particular uh, might be a really good example of what you're what you're trying to push us towards. Um, Psy is actually a, a mod based on the uh, irregular at Magic High School. Um, so it's a I don't know. It's an example of how you might be able to bring um, bring content from outside into Minecraft. Thank you. Uh, from the from the kind of vanilla command block game side to another mod that I just kind of want to call people's attention to is uh, Game Mode Four by Sparks or Accidental Games. Uh, it's it's kind of like enhancements to Minecraft, and I believe they also have a few story-based modules. It's a very fantastic uh, server available, and also uh, command block creation. So uh, check into that. Uh, uh, the IC2. Uh, I come from a very unique background where it, I have a lot of quality assurance uh, jobs under my belt, from uh, food factories to automotives to office paperwork, uh, shipping and handling, and 
jobs. Uh, quality assurance is kind of what I do, but I also have a, a degree in supply chain management. Uh, and the closest thing that, the, as, as you guys were describing, the closest thing I could think of was that is supply chain management, which is moving from uh, factory to factory, but also moving them through production lines and also keeping track of expiration dates, things like that. It's not quite like heat dispersion, of course, but uh, I could see the correlations there, uh, which will move me into my next point. Uh, I have another question. So regarding the whole thing, see Minecraft as a game platform and more as a platform to build your own game and build your own ideas, um, I think there is a lot of issues with the lacking of licensibility. You can't basically take Minecraft as an engine, put on your game, do a full conversion and release something like that, just because there is no way of doing that right now. And I feel like that's like something that is missing and lacking right now that would move the, the whole Minecraft as a game development platform way forward. Uh, where Microsoft has to step in at probably some point. Uh, a lot of issues, definitely. I completely agree with you. Uh, particularly anything created with Minecraft, uh, you kind of have to just let Mojang use, which is a, a frustrating caveat to their uh, was the guidelines user user agreement. Yeah, and user agreement. Uh, and yeah, the end user, the EULA. Uh, so I, I have tons of issues with that. Uh, but let's, I, I like to set that aside because it, it's a, it's a problem that we can't really address because we're, as you said, we release our own games using Minecraft and that one, that one, that's going to bring me into my next point, uh, that I want to talk about, which is what does it really take to truly consider Minecraft as a game development platform? And we're closer than we've ever been before uh, in years. I've been doing this from the release of Command Blocks initially, uh, and I've worked primarily in Minecraft uh, through texture packs, resource packs, uh, and through Command Blocks to create custom experiences as possible uh and we're at this point now where i'm able to write pseudo code using uh, minecraft mans and press a button to in sublime which is my choice to text editor to build it which is run it through a one command compiler that copies it to my clipboard put that in a command block and it develops uh, a function oriented code and allows me to write separate functions that I can call in order. And it's still very janky, very pseudocode, very not intuitive or fun. It's magic most of the time. But it's, a, it's allowing me to lay out logic a lot more quickly, uh, not worry about keeping the code synced between the text documents and the Minecraft command code. Um, or the the in the in game man blocks, and it's making uh, building and testing functions super quick. So we've kind of, as developers using only command blocks, have kind of conquered that. We're getting to that point, which is fantastic. The second thing that we're we've kind of with is uh, figuring out the aspects and abilities of different blocks. And we can change the look of a block, we could change the model of a block, we could change a lot of aspects of the block, so we're kind of there of level design and uh, asset design. Uh, we're build models and import assets, so we're kind of there, but all of this aside, we're allowed, we're, we can change the look and feel, we can actually build an experience, we can deliver sound and text in meaningful and useful ways. We're there, it's not amazing, but we're kind of there. But it's still, we have to get to the real problem that uh, we can't really release our own game because a lot of custom maps, a lot of custom mods come with their own installers. They come, uh, custom maps come in zip files, uh, which is the primary group of people who are releasing quote unquote custom games. 
we should really be using installers. We should be able to have our own launcher profile that has our own settings and our own mod and our own setup with our own menu system. Why is this not a thing? This is, this is the next bit that we need to conquer, which is need to work with mod makers, need to work with command blockers, need to work with kind of us as a community of content developers need to make it easier for the end user, which as I'm sure a lot of you know, can be difficult to de deal with. And that's what it is. Uh, but being able to just one click install and then say, go here, open the game, choose this profile, then you can play it creates a custom experience so much better than ever before. And I feel like a lot of mod de developers kind of take this for granted. You do have repos. You do have these great kind of installers that work a lot of the time, all the time. It's, it's a kind of a fantastic experience installing a mod, but we don't have that as custom map makers. And that's frustrating. So I'll, again uh, we're kind of end coming in the last half hour of my bit so I'll open up the floor again for some more questions or comments so I, I've seen an opinion a lot in some areas of the community where there are like modders or map makers who because updates to the game sometimes break their stuff and they may not play the vanilla game I've seen a lot of people say that Mo Yang should just update like map maker content creator stuff and should not continue to add features. Now I, I personally don't agree with this, I think you should please both the people who just play Minecraft and the people who make content for it, but I was just wondering what your take was on that. We have this huge hatred for Minecraft updates as major map makers. We spend a lot of time relying on relying on uh, neat, weird little features to to that allow us to do something we haven't done before, like uh, ray cast or crazy angular weird stuff. I can't even think of anything right off the off the top of my head. But we have, have thirty six is a great example. When block thirty six was removed, it made all of us cry a little bit because it. Rely, we relied on that for so many glitches or so many f kind of great things. Uh, Stones Labs too. Um, we we rely on glitches, and I've always fought against this. I'd rather not use a glitch. I'd rather work within the confines and constrictions of what the platform uh, has offered me, and I've always maintained this uh, from the first time that I tried to make a map. I was using redstone, very basic commands. I avoided using block 36. I avoided using any kind of glitch I could. I tried to work within the confines of the game, and there's one reason for that. It's to keep my game maintainable through the platform updates. So if the game updated and I wasn't able to do the method before, I, I would be able to at least find something that was comparable and go from there. Uh, I've been very lucky through a lot of the updates before uh, 1.9. I was very lucky to not have to deal with many updates uh, that of my stuff because I focused on keeping my code and keeping my logic uh, maintainable as possible. Is that, uh, do you have any questions about that? No, thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? So, sort of going off of that question, uh, I know you said you, that you, you avoid glitches when you can, and if something was a feature in the game, you would use it, but uh, given something that's not necessarily a glitch, such as using uh, entities for collision detection or using squids or armor stands to keep track of positions, if there was an official way in the game to do this that might be more complicated than that, would you use it? Absolutely, and I, I think that's that's a sign of being a professional, is to say that I've 
professional, I mean to say that I try to use the best tools and the best options available to me in the best way possible. And even if the way is more complicated, it should be a way that's thoroughly documented and the people who want to use it and want to be quote unquote a professional should use even the more complicated way because it is technically the right way and the way that the developers have implemented it for use. All right. That's a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> Does uh, anyone else have a question? Um, just to expand on what you've been saying, um, how do you feel about uh, map makers u making use of block update bugs? Or uh, let's say bud detectors to be more neutral about them? That was redundant. We've, as map makers, we don't really need to rely on block update detectors for anything anymore because we have a uh, test for block, we have uh, entities that we can pivot off of the player if we need to to test whether or not we have the right block in the right place or the right thing has been updated or anything like that. There is always a way to do something. It may be a little more convoluted and complicated to get there, but it's... I mean, to, to more address your point, uh, a bud is kind of a bug that became a game. And the Windows 10 and the Pocket Edition version have uh, updated this to be an observer block. And I would kind of stick to my guns on this and not rely on a block update detector because it's not really officially supported. Kind of is because, I mean, they, they broke it and then they fixed it. So it's unofficially, officially, unofficially supported, uh, something like that. Uh, but I would, and would eventually use an observer block if it ever came to the PC version. All right, thank you. I have time for one more question before I just kind of launch into my final uh, bit. All right. I would give people a minute to type. Someone might be typing a long question. Oh, yeah. Right. Not everyone's in mumble. Right, thank you. Tell a joke. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to ask a question. If they did, <laughs> they probably would have copy, copied their uh, text and then said, uh, wait, hold on, and then pasted it back. Okay, so continue. Thank you. All right. So, circling back to my first point, if we assume that Minecraft is a game development platform, if we assume it's a blank sheet of paper, thing that we sometimes need to just walk away from. Uh, another quote from one of my favorite content creators is a guy named Max Landis. He's kind of this hotshot Hollywood screenwriter, but he says something I find was really important. When you're writing, you should be dictating previously thought. When you actually go to get to do the thing that you want to do, you really should just have already thought about what you're doing and now you're just following through the motions. And I find if people struggle with making mods or struggle with uh, thinking of ideas, to just put the game away, put it down, go play something else, and then well, as you're playing it, you should be thinking about what the idea is, what the issue is, what viewpoint are they approaching it from uh, story. Is Mumble actually rip or did he just time out? No, it's just his internet, it looks like. Oh my god. Oh. Alright, I don't well, know where I cut whatever, out. Whatever you were talking about, you, I, we heard a stow and then you cut off. Uh, but before that, 
What a sentence. Uh, does anyone have a uh, sentence memory of more than two sent of more than two words? Oh, sorry. No. Nope. Uh, <laughs> is anyone actually listening? I just yes. blanked out. Not in that short shooting. I mean, I am jumping about, around like, and shit, but I am listening. Uh, director. Hot and, like, code. Oh, um, yeah, 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 and you were saying, like, go play a game or something, or yeah. do something, but keep thinking. Yeah, that's right. Yep, yep. See, that's I weird. was listening, I told you. Yeah, that's the long the point. period of science, uh, the long period of silence let me to leave, like, my memory. I was listening, I promise. <laughs> I, just I thought you were doing oh, just you were saying that, uh... uh you were also saying that, uh, any, any writing that you do, when you sit down to write, it should... Uh, be previous dictating previous thought. That's yeah. I think that's and, where we left off. And I'd like to I'd like to misappropriate that to game design. Any when you sit down to design a game, when you design a map or you design a level, a texture, a mod, a model thing, it should be. If you're struggling and you're a person that te typically struggles with what to come up with, you should be somewhere else thinking about something else. Playing different games, watching movies, looking at art, reading books, any taking a walk to people, any to kind of start forming thoughts and relating your what you want with what you're seeing and taking what you like from it and being inspired to come up for your own thoughts. When you finally sit down and you open Minecraft and you open Photoshop or your game or your IDE or your text document to create your mechanics anything you can think about what you already want and then you could just make that you already have the visual in your head you have everything that you want to do in your head so when i'm asking you to please stop playing minecraft i'm asking you really to go find something else original and bring it back and make it your own end of my talk and my panel uh, i will open the floor again one more time uh, for questions Well, uh, thank you very much <laughs> uh, for listening, and I'm still waiting for questions. I just wanted to also uh, thank you for accepting my panel, and thank you guys for being so kind and asking really interesting and uh, relevant questions. Um, if you have more, or you want to follow what we do, or what I do, you can... Uh, Check out my website, moesh.ca, that's M-O-E-S-H dot C-A. Uh, I do a podcast called uh, Green Bug. I also talk to other game developers. My next uh, podcast coming out, I will be talking to a developer from EA, good friends, Murray. And uh, Alexo56 asks, what other games should we play then? I am playing uh, Guacamole right now, right now, which is a Metroidvania uh, about luchadors. So that's kind of cool. Instead of like in Metroid, when you turn in uh, Guacamole, you turn into a chicken. So <laughs> it's a game of a lot of heart and a lot of uh, really cool kind of uh, back and forth traveling, backtracking, and uh, great challenge uh, for a platformer. Uh, yeah, try that one. Just, uh, you know, if you want to be a game developer, start thinking like a game developer. Can I recommend Ludum Daro as a thing if you want to do game development, like do game jams? Absolutely. Actually, Absolutely. yeah. Definitely. Some of yeah, and, uh... the work that I'm proudest of is actually done on Ludum Daro, so I would definitely second that. Yeah, and on the Somebody's Minecraft modding side of things, uh, this is going to be the second time I'm plugging this uh, during the con. Uh, is uh, uh, yeah, it's spelled Ludum Dare, so you got the first word correct. Uh, but anyway, uh, coming up next month is um, uh, oh, it's uh, the modding trials, I think, and it's basically uh, Ludum Dare, but for Minecraft mods. So if you're more into, into the modding side than uh, game development, uh, but we probably should get into game development at some point, just saying, uh, then uh, you can join the modding trials. And uh, the modding trials, yes, are basically a spiritual successor of uh, Mod Jam. Uh, there's more information on the Feed the Beast subreddit. I don't know if you like Metroid-esque stuff, Falcon and I would probably recommend um, Axiom Verge. 
Axiom Verge and uh, Oh man. You hit some else. Or, or yeah. Ori. We have this uh, bottomless We have this bottomless hunger for uh Metroidvania, so <laughs> if I can plug a couple uh maps that would be really great. Uh anything yeah. by Jiggerbov is uh is kind of, is guaranteed to be a good experience. A Metroidvania type of thing he created there was Infinity Dungeons. Which uh, could be a couple hours of experience. Uh, it's kind of a Mega meets Roguelite, which I know kind of flies in the face of each other, but you'll get it. Uh, another great map of his is also uh, Simburbia, uh, which has adventure elements mixed with uh, SimCity. And I'm trying to think of any other map developer. Mine's going crazy. Uh, I have a lot of great maps on my website. Uh, Beyond Perception 2 is another Minecraft map that's great, which if you've played the game Beyond Perception, uh, they recreated it in Minecraft, but then they also created a sequel. And it's it's pretty good. It, uh, you definitely start to go with Minecraft if we start thinking of it as a game development platform. And the same goes for any of Jiggerbob's maps. Just real quick question, because a lot of this um, convention has is is to do with mods. I was just curious, what is your stance on like maps that include or work with mods? Do do you think that's a good idea, or do you think that's too much of a barrier for people to come in and play? I think if the installer installs the map and installs the thing and maybe changes the main menu to say play game instead of load map, I'm into it. Let's let's do it. Let's please more of it. Even, hmm. even mods that work really well. I mean, everyone loved Deep Sea Turtle Trace. I mean, that was that was a beloved product from the Box Box because of its uh, mixture of mods and maps and the explode the flying things and everything like just the voiceovers. And that was possible because of mods. And we need more of that. We need map makers and mod makers and level designers to work together and we need level designers to say to start realizing minecraft is kind of the best level out there right now everything else is an asset based level design that takes control away from level designers to technical people and minecraft the person that's making it pretty can also make it functional and awesome and that's kind of an amazing thing so i hope modders and map makers that can pull it together enough to make something awesome. Uh, <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of what I like about ultra hardcore maps, um, honestly, is the fact that it's it tends to be a little bit more cohesive and more like story. It's it's closer. Hmm. Oh, the, yeah, um, Super Hostile like, maps? Yeah, like uh, Crash Landing, um, which was brutal to begin with. It was almost unplayable. And then we discovered that you could drink etching acid, and then we just enjoyed the story. <laughs> I remember that. It <laughs> oh, was pretty own. excellent. Part of you could drink etching acid. You can't anymore. They patched it. Oh. Yeah, well. To, to follow up with... Uh, Xfinity 2 there, uh, making mod packs is super easy, it's having issues with Java that's super annoying. I think the people who are attracted to making custom maps in Minecraft are absolutely, often absolutely terrified of putting together a mod pack and doing it with that. I, I don't know if it's a stigma, just lack of skill, or just uh, lack of understanding of how things work. But it's hard enough to learn command blocks. It's hard enough to try to learn the logic that's the backward selector logic, the scoreboard logic, and the ridiculousness hoops that we have to jump through through that. that. And then making a map on top of that. It's, it seems like it would be easier, but I don't think it, the research has been done for mods that would help game designers. And maybe that should be a project. And maybe, you know, someone's listening to this that uh, can help 
me do that, I would absolutely help. Love to. Mod game designers mod pack. Could be a cool idea. Yeah, that could be cool. Like a mod pack uh, that just adds like more commands or something, or maybe even like a special kind of command block. Like uh, an event block would be really nice. Yeah, it's like a location block. Yeah, Sorry, ultimately, as, um, sort of as a server admin, uh, command blocks I find incredibly frustrating because, um, uh, as you were saying before, you used to use like block update detectors and stuff to trigger things, and now instead you use test for block. But the problem with test for block is it's running in a loop, constantly checking the block, which is an absolute nightmare for lag. On the other hand, block update detectors, believe it or not, are actually very fast because they use block updates. Another thing, another way that um, another point to ex to expand on that is, I believe command block has been incredibly inefficient up until this point, because you don't need that to be testing the block the entire game. You only need to really be testing the block when the player's in the area and the event hasn't been triggered yet, and you know the player doesn't have this flag yet, or the player hasn't doesn't have this this flag testing for whatever. Like there's the we we've been incredibly ineffective and really frankly amateur ish a lot of the time not all of, not everyone don't get it twisted but uh, i mean it, we we need to start th we don't worry about efficiency we don't worry about lag nearly as much and that's just something we need to start changing yeah but the the thing is though is um uh, so you say like oh use a scoreboard flag on the players but how are you going to check that scoreboard flag are you going to use a command block clock? Because that's the exact same problem. Actually, if you execute the command through a player that has a certain scoreboard objective, the command doesn't run unless it can actually execute it through that player. Yes, so but you're still incurring the cost of executing the command and checking all of the uh, all of the parameters, which is we pretty much the most expensive part of executing a command. Oh, never mind. We we also uh, have like a scoreboard players test. Uh, we also have obviously, obviously a test for a player instead of execute player. We can test for a player with a specific tag or with a specific thing. I, oh, let's assume multiplayer situation, of course, right? So we we still have to identify all players. We to figure out what tag they have. Or, uh, but another feature that we have now that we didn't have before is the directional command blocks, which no longer cause block updates unless I believe they're run, but they're way more efficient than they've ever been. Uh, still, I, I understand what you're saying. The actual testing all engines is really expensive. And it's a problem, definitely. But we can also uh, load and unload chunks. And blocks will automatically start and stop as those chunks load in and those chunks load out. So you can kind of get it a little bit better. But it's still a huge issue. Yeah, and ultimately, I'm the, the, of course the main reason I'm, I'm saying this is because it's just got me thinking with the uh, the event blocks for the the map creator mod. Let's just imagine you place down a command block. You configure it to uh, instead of instead of always active or or needs redstone, you set it to um, like uh, event, I guess, for lack of a better term, and then you enter in the condition in the box, and then you don't have to power it. You don't have to run it in a, in a clock or anything. It's just when that event becomes true, it emits redstone or executes a command block chain. That sounds great. That sounds like where we should be heading for. Like, the, our biggest block like as that. map developers is having location-based events. Like everything has to has be global right now. Uh, we can we have a lot more power than we've ever had with uh, using entities. That have no hitbox like uh, area effect clouds we can do them as markers now uh technically because our maps uh don't last for three years or the, at least the game state usually doesn't last for three years so that's kind of helpful uh but we can group and we can target and scope multiple en entities in multiple places and run tests and separate our test logic from our action logic more so than we ever could before uh which is crazy and awesome 
uh, the fact that we're able to actually just do kind of scoreboard logic and testing before we even set blocks or we do particle effects or we do gives or, or teleports, whatever we need to do. Uh, being able to do that would be great. Another problem for that we need to conquer is uh, connected textures and texture stretching and giving properties to blocks. Like, uh, if this block is broken, trigger this event, right? like as you were saying before. But uh, anyways. All right, well, we have three minutes left in the panel, and uh, unless anyone has any more questions, I guess it's probably a good place to end it. Okay. If you're talking, we can't hear you. Oh, he probably can't hear me if his internet's cut out. Well, on a scribe, you need to do stand-up comedy until he gets fixed. I agree. Keep the people entertained. I agree. It's and your, I'm back. It's your duty. Oh. Oh, look. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Maybe. Yes, yes we can. Then, uh, AI... Re scripting it, and then using... Scripting it Lua and then using man blocks. I believe there's mods that do that, don't they? Could they be used for custom map creation? Hmm. Uh, but I write all my command block. I can dictate whether or not a command block is repeating or impulse or a chain command block. I can tell whether it's conditional or not. And I'm at this level where I'm able to write functions that do a single thing and then sequence those functions in or and have that load in and work properly and work within the confines of not relying on a bug or a certain behavior that might change oh uh, you still cannot hear me no we can hear you no we can, we can hear, hear you just fine okay all right And that is, uh, yeah, uh, you, I'm able to do that. You can go to my website, uh, uh, mosh.ca, and just click the link, link uh, R RTFM. And uh, under that link is read the friendly manual, and you will see uh, how to automatically compile command code. It's, you know, it's kind of crazy, but we're, we can do it now, which is so strange. You mean like a language that compiles to command blocks? Exactly. Yeah, I always uh, thought I that was coming. Mm -hmm. I've I've wanted it for so long, and there's nothing that quite fit what I wanted. But uh, with uh, Smelt by Nasp, uh, it's kind of the CLI he made, and it's a shell command. And by using Sublime's build systems, I can hook my Minecraft command code, which is a syntax highlighter I have for Minecraft into smelt run the file through it and then it puts the one command in my clipboard which then i can paste into a block which then generates all the functions with all the mark to a column the entity oriented location independent as well which is awesome it's a new era uh, well, I'm going to head off uh, to rest my throat, but I'm looking forward to the next panel. <laughs>